What's up YouTube, Dimux here, and today I'm going to be breaking down the reveal of Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition, coming March 6th on PS4 and Xbox One. PC players don't have to worry about this edition of the game because all the content in the Royal Edition will be included in the Windows Edition. Lucky bastards. With that being said, what is Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition? Well, think about it as the complete edition of Final Fantasy XV that includes all the episodic DLC from Gladios to Ignis and the multiplayer expansion Comrades, and many other new features that will make fans say, Why wasn't this in the game at launch? It has been confirmed that the Royal Edition will be priced at 50 US dollars if you don't have Final Fantasy XV already, but if you do have Final Fantasy XV, there will be a Royal Pack for $20. Unfortunately, there are no benefits for season pass holders from what I researched on the Royal Edition. I may be wrong about that. You guys can let me know in the comments section down below. And if that's the case, I can understand why some fans are upset about this, me included. Okay, now with the pricing out of the way, let's talk about the new features that Square Enix proclaims will evolve Final Fantasy XV to greater heights. First off, you'll be able to switch characters playing as Gladio, Ignis, and Prompto, which I agree with most fans that this should have been a feature in the game day one, seeing that this gameplay feature was advertised in previous trailers. You can drive the Royal Vessel which is Noctis' personal boat, and freely explore the seas of Cape Kayum and Altissia. Hey, is that Monstro? And from the trailer of the Royal Edition, it seems like the game will include extra cutscenes and missions for the final act of the game, with Kor returning to fight by Noctis' side, along with an expanded map called Insomnia City Ruins. There will be extra bosses which include Cerberus. Damn Hades, what you been feeding this dog, Kirby Spicy Curry? And then you have Omega looking like the spider out of Wild Wild West with a laser beam, and Rulers of Yore which looks annoying as f with that teleport ability. Noctis also has a new ability called Army Gear Unleashed, which seems to make Noctis' special move more powerful than ever. And they said Cloud could beat Noctis. It's a joke, it's a joke guys, I'm just kidding. I like Noctis and Cloud equally. Finally, the minor additions to the Royal Edition are new gear, weapons, regalia car skins, item sets, and a first person mode. Whew, that's a lot of content. And that's not all when it comes down to new content for Final Fantasy XV. It has been confirmed that there will be three more DLC episodes coming this year, with one of them being confirmed to be Episode Arden. Damn Square, how much milk can you produce from this game? Honestly, knowing that the Royal Edition exists, I'm 95% sure that there will be a Kingdom Hearts 3 Final Mix. Mark my words. So there you guys have it, that's all the information I have on Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition. Are you guys happy about this edition releasing in March of 2018? Or do you feel cheated when you bought Final Fantasy XV way back in 2016? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps me out and subscribe for more content from me on Final Fantasy XV and other games in general. I'm Demolex, I'll see you in the future.